Hi guys, so today let's focus on simple tips to improve your presentation. Some of these tips, you're aware of them, but we're just going to be talking about them extensively and also with more emphasis so that you're more conscious of them when you speak. So this would be particularly useful to presenters like me, but essentially it is applicable to whatever professional presentation, be it public speaking, be it emceeing, whatever, anything that has to do with uh, public speaking, this should be or would be useful for that. Okay, so let's start with the very first one, which I always emphasize, and that is you ensuring that you sound your words correctly all the time. So this includes even when you're having a chat with your spouse or your friends or your colleagues at work, when you're not on air or when you're not having a public presentation, it's important that you sound your words right. Remember your vowel sounds, your consonant sounds, you pronounce your words correctly because there are people in your audience who know how words should be pronounced. And uh, some people are just out there to hear if you know what you're saying. Sound your words correctly if you don't want to go on air to <laughs> mess up. So I recall there was one of my favorite uh, presenters back then. So she used to anchor a particular show and she just took a liking or she formed the habit of always mimicking someone who had age factor. And then she continued, you know, using the H uh, sound when she was not supposed to use it and all of that. And then suddenly she discovered that she went on air. She was doing it jokingly, right? But lo and behold, she went on air and she mistakenly used the H sound. Like she used the H sound when she wasn't supposed to use it. And the H factor became a problem, a serious problem for her. And then over time, she now had to start correcting it. She stopped joking about it. <laughs> and you know, that took a lot of process to go back to the normal way of saying things. So you see, what you do when you're not on air can affect what you do when you're on air. Now listen to that again. Sometimes you feel that because you're not on air, you're not at a public speaking event, you're not speaking to a formal audience, and then you just lose guard, you use your words or pronounce your words incorrectly, and then in the end, you have a price to pay for it, okay? So always sound your words correctly. Your vowel sounds, your consonant sounds, always sound them correctly, whether you're on air or not, whether you have a public presentation or not okay now next is never rush your words never ever ever rush your words so there's that common notion that when you speak fast or when you rush your words that you come across as someone who is brilliant vast or who knows what he or she is saying but that is absolutely wrong you need to learn to pace your words at a measured pace knowing when to pause knowing when to lay emphasis on your words and this is particularly useful when you're doing a news presentation you want to know when to take a pause you want to know when to emphasize your words for instance if you're talking about money you're talking about figures you want to learn to pause and stress the figures for instance if you're saying the federal government has budgeted a sum of 200 billion dollars to pay subsidy this year that is different from saying the federal government has budgeted 200 billion dollars to pay subsidy this year <laughs> so yes that may sound like okay mm, she's a fast reader but i don't think that gives any kind of appeal like the other way of presenting it where you maintain the right pauses and also emphasize and stress the right words especially the figures okay so there are benefits of having or maintaining a slower measured pace when you're talking to an audience number one it gives them the time to process what you're saying so you know the essence of communication is to pass a message across and to get feedback communication 
isn't complete until you get a feedback i know you know that okay so why do you rush your words why are you in a hurry to pass the message across if you lose because most times when you rush your words you eventually lose your audience and when you lose your audience then you've lost the message is lost the essence of communication is lost so you want to take that slower measured pace and it takes practice okay so sometimes you have to stand in front of your mirror practice your words say them or in front of your family members and friends let them give you feedback so you know how or when to maintain your pauses how to structure your sentences so you don't come across as someone who is not confident or who doesn't know what he or she is saying so you want to ensure that you maintain normal pauses measured pace and do not rush okay Another reason you need to maintain a slower measured pace is because it gives you time to collect and collate your thoughts properly before you speak. And that way, your words carry more weight and the essence is not lost, especially when it has to do with you lecturing or you uh, casting the news, as I said earlier. So sometimes in a bit to measure your pace, you may come across or reduce it to a point where it is now too slow you don't want to do that there is an extreme to everything so you want to be sure that you're maintaining the right pace another way to improve your communication skills is to be vast be well read 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 and read i cannot overemphasize the importance of reading especially when it comes to communication that's where you get your content from so you're not just a pretty face or a handsome face without content an empty pretty face oh that's going to be devastating you want to ensure that you have content you know what you're saying so for instance you want to talk about crude oil theft in nigeria you want to go into the history of crude oil theft how it started when was oil even discovered in nigeria go into all of those details so one thing uh, that is quite a mystery is how a lot of people go to public presentations or go out to speak without even doing any research. So I remember back then, before I became a radio presenter, I used to like presentation. It was something to be admired, especially when you hear people go on air with different accents and you're wondering, oh, this should be fun. But really, it's not just about going on air to talk. You're not just talking, you're, you're, you're passing information. And there are people who know better than you, irrespective of how much you know. But it is the onus is on you to do your research and at least have information, have something that you want to pass across. You're not just going on air to show your pretty face or your pretty voice or that you know how or your accent okay now talking about accent i'm very particular about you pronouncing your words correctly irrespective of what accent you have so yeah a lot of people focus more on accent than the actual pronunciation of words sometimes what you hear people or the accent you think people have that's those who know their onions when it comes to presentation. That accent you think they have is as a result of the trainings they've gotten from pronouncing their words correctly, okay? So when you pronounce your words correctly, even for whether it's a British, now the problem comes in when you try to mix or blend the British accent with the American accent, and then you garnish that up with some Spanish intonation. <laughs> well, I don't know how that was down, but my point is stick with one accent. So if you're going British, learn the correct pronunciation, the correct sounds in British English. If you're going American, learn the correct pronunciation and how to sound your words the American way, okay? Well, I tilt more towards the British English because that's the way I was trained and that's, you know, I always talk about the fact that we were colonized by the British and all of that. But in the end, it's your choice. If you want to go American, just ensure that whatever you do, you do it well. Get all the training, learn how to sound your words correctly. So the trick to it is to get yourself trained, read more. So I was talking about reading more and getting the content especially when you have a topic to speak on when you have a focal point to dwell on at a public event or at a 
radio show or TV show, you want to ensure that you read up on that so that you're not just passing some form of personal opinion. You're speaking from an informed point. That's very important, okay? Because as I said, there are people out there who know more than you do. And there are people who do not know. I want to learn from your wealth of knowledge, so to speak. You don't want to mislead them. Next, stop bothering about what the audience might be thinking because that would distract you from getting your points across. And of course, after you've rehearsed, you've gotten, you've done your research, you have your facts, and you have everything you want to say listed out and arranged in your head, you don't want to be distracted by what you think someone's expression or someone's body language means, okay? Except you've said something really out of place. You don't want to concern yourself with that because the truth is, a lot of people come to different conferences or shows or presentations or summits for different reasons. Some are just there to make you uncomfortable or to just, some people are carrying burdens and they just carry it all over their faces and except you're a mind reader, you don't want to bother yourself with thinking, ah, what's this person thinking? Why is she looking at me like that? Why is she, mm. okay, so that's where the place of also not looking at just one person when you're doing a public presentation that's a place where that comes in you want to ensure that you are maintaining eye contact but you're not staying too long on one person you're looking around at your audience okay that takes practice too so that's a place of rehearsal rehearse with your family members as i said so you see that all these points are intertwined so take your time to practice to rehearse get your facts ready do a lot of research and you're good to go so let me wrap this up finally by reading to you this quote by larina case and she says true confidence is not thinking you'll get a great result it's knowing you can handle any result so sometimes we get bothered or concern ourselves with the fact that we want everything to be perfect you're just looking at every mistake and you know judging yourself prematurely yeah so everything will not always go the way you planned it yes yes i said that you have to let that sink into your head that things may go awry at some point for instance you may forget a point irrespective of how many times you rehearsed in front of your mirror in front of your family members things can go awry you might forget a point you might just lose composure at some point but the most important thing is to pick yourself back up and just continue keep doing it so be prepared to handle whatever result comes out of your presentation for instance you could get awkward questions so there are people who carry different burdens and issues around and sometimes they just want to pass on that issue or that burden or that anger that they may have carried from home or from wherever they just want to pass it on to you and then they're asking the relevant questions at your presentation or asking you awkward questions you want to know how to handle such people without getting angry aggravated or losing control okay you have to always be in control so remember this quote whenever you go for a presentation or when you handle your next presentation remember that yes it's good to be optimistic that it's going to go great i'm going to have a fantastic result i'm going to be loved my audience would appreciate my presentation i'm going to have an excellent performance but you also have to be prepared for awkward situation things going not as planned okay so that you don't get discombobulated eh? <laughs> i remember that word from one of my videos yeah okay so always practice don't mumble your words don't rush give your audience time to process your words stop bothering about what your audience think research and sound your words correctly all the time this is where we wrap it up today. Thank you so much for being a part of Fluently Speaking with Bala today. Remember that the conversation continues in the comment section. Like, comment, and share. And please subscribe if you haven't. Watch my other videos right here and right here. I'll see you next time. Bye. -ya.